Rodolfo, all my life, I, like you, wanted to know what it's all about. And to know what it's all about, I have to start with what I know, the human mind. And to start with the mind, I got to do the brain. So I did my PhD in neuroscience, but that was four decades ago. So I want to forget all that and come to you and ask you, I want to start at the beginning. So how, how do I understand even what a brain is? Well, actually, it is beautiful and straightforward. Uh, of all our organs, the brain is the most spectacular from many points of view. Um, if you consider it's um, about one and a half liters, about three pounds. Yeah. Um, our body is 150 pounds, whatever. So it's about 2% of the weight. Right. It requires 25% of all the energy. So it is an unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, as far as really uh, not only devouring uh, resources, but actually making the universe in which we think we live. So, it's it, very it, expensive it, for the body to keep alive. It is very expensive for the body to keep alive indeed, but it's more than that. It is us. It is us to the point that, as you know, if, if your brain dead, you are dead. Yeah. Even uh, your body may continue to be alive. So okay, this is it. We're talking about the organ that uh, can most directly relate to what we are. We are our brain. Mm. Okay. Okay. So then, of course, and what else is it, of course? And, and you know, in general, where did it come from? Because, you know, obviously it didn't appear suddenly. And that is one of the beautiful stories in biology. How did it came to be? I mean, why, do, why do we need brains for? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is it that they do that make them so special? And the answer is, again, one of these beautiful, really gorgeous answers. And it is, uh, the brain evolved to be able to move in an intelligent fashion. Mm, explain. That sounds very simplistic. I mean, yeah. it's, that sounds like one of the things the brain does, movement, but it certainly doesn't, at least superficially, sound like the initial deep motivation for why the brain is at all. Right. Well, let me tell you why I think it is the, the core issue. Uh, it would have to be something like we started as single cells. Single yes. cells decided to make organisms. Yes. Organism means many things. So for instance, death appeared for the first time, and collective death, before you die or survive on your own. But now there is something else. You get together, you form an organ that is so pure that if some of the cells die, everybody dies. That, that is commitment. When, when, when cells are by themselves, they don't have that problem. I mean, the question is, I remember as a child saying, why well, is it when I begin to die, my cells say, I'm leaving the ship. Yeah, right. I'm going back to water. Yeah. You can't. can't so, that. There, so there is something very, very spectacular about the, the degree of, of, of cohesion that has occurred. Okay. Now, the next question is, but this is a, a, a high price to pay, and why do you would do it? And the answer is you want to interact on a microscopic level. Hold the rock, bite another animal, <laughs> whatever. Um, and actually, animals come into, into flavors. Plants, which are again animals, they don't move. <laughs> they actually plant it. <laughs> and animals, they're not planted. Now, not being planted is an enormous advantage and it's an enormous disadvantage. First of all, if you're going to move, it's going to cost you an enormous amount of money. It's going to cost you an enormous amount of energy. Yes. Okay. So it means what? It means you have to be able to eat other animals. Yeah, to get that energy. Because you cannot get enough energy from the sun. So we, we know we are here at the invitation of plants. <laughs> all of us. All of us who are moving animals. So, the advantage is uh, also another, and people don't realize the advantage of being able to flee from problems, to run away. Running away means that you're not like a plant. A plant is a castle. You know, if you don't have it inside your castle, you cannot defend it. So, you know, plants have more, more genes than we do. Meaning we have found a, an easier molecular solution to reality. Now, we move, so we have trouble, we run away. Okay, then the question is, what do you need to run away, and why is that important? Okay, so what do we have inside? We have a system that is capable of 
activating a geometry in such a fashion that we can move over the surface of Earth. We displace ourselves. It's not passive movement that like a plant may have. In order to do that, you require to have joints and muscles and so on, and at least contractile elements, first point. Secondly, you need to have a desire to move. You could imagine a, an animal that could move but doesn't want to move, so an intentionality. In order to have intentionality, you have to have the ability to predict. Uh -huh. You don't want to move into danger. So I consider these to be the three basic issues about how the brains are about. Movement, intentionality, to begin to end then prediction. Movement, intentionality, and prediction. And right. those are the three energizes that created through evolution that what we call brains. As far as I'm concerned, that's all there is. That's all you need, in fact. <laughs> and so thinking, as we define thinking in this magical, mystical thing, is really what? Thinking is a premolar event. Thinking is internalized movement. Thinking is all the things that you could do out of which one you will do. That is uh, what thinking is about. Uh, I mean, it's strange, it would be strange to imagine evolution which you could actually uh, see, feel, whatever, or even think, and be able to do nothing about it. So, no, not at all. So the, 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 uh, w w w what our purpose is, so to speak, is to move for these various purposes, to flee. To, to move in intelligent fashion. Right, to, to absorb energy, to flee from predators, whatever it is, right. in intelligent fashion. Therefore, there's an intent. That's right. And the predict, the predictability is such that that the movement will accomplish whatever the, the predicted thing is needed to be. Right, because you're moving, because the universe is coming towards you, first of all. That is one of the reasons why the brain is in the head, because it is what, what in encounters reality yeah. first. I mean, a posteriori wouldn't work. Yeah, so, right. So, you know, most animals are tubular and move in the direction of where their brain is. Yeah. So the first part always becomes okay. the brain. So okay, that's very consistent. Right, now, the question, of course, is this, but how, how does one really know that this is possible? Is there a knockdown argument? Or is there some examples that yeah, you can right, show? Right. And yeah. the answer is yes. yes. And of course, as, as I have known about cement rays and periphera in particular uh, for a long time. And these I always, are? Yeah, these, are, these are sea squirts. Uh -huh. And these sea squirts are wonderful. Sea squirts live in the bottom of the ocean, they are sessile, that is, they're planted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they're basically uh, a structure that has two entries, one, one that water goes in, the other one water goes out. Right. The perfect bureaucrat <laughs> it sits there. And, it, and then it filter feeds. Uh -huh. it, it allows for, and then takes little bits of pieces and so on and so forth. Now, the intriguing thing is when it reproduces, Instead of making seeds like plants, plants too many, yeah. it makes few, and the seeds are intelligent. As follows, it is in fact um, a tadpole that is generated. Ah. The tadpole has an eye, and it has a vestibular system that is an organ of equilibrium, yeah. and it has a notochord, something like a cord. Right? Yeah. So it, it has a brain, and it moves with it, and it it, the digestive system is not very good, so it has to be, has to live, <coughs> pardon me, out of uh, the um, energy given by the parents. So it has a battery, so to speak. It goes around, and I'm talking very loosely, it goes around and at some point it finds a good place. To plant. Itself. And plants its head and eats it. It eats the, itself. It's, the, it. it eats its nervous system. The, the, some neurons remain and are part of the system that but the neurons that remain are more like the gut cells that uh, we have, uh, not a system that is capable of making an image. So the brain, quasi-brain that it had was needed during the movement phase? Only during the movement. Uh, when you don't move anymore, when you don't displace yourself. Then you can just eat your brain and you don't need it anymore and consume well, it for energy. Yes, absolutely. So, so uh, that is what I consider to be uh, one, of the, one of the major issues. I mean, the fact is that you, that, that unless you move seriously, actively, that, such that you would need an image, right. then you need a brain. I mean, somebody, people say, well, but plants move. So well, you, it's you, passive. But, but yeah. it's a passive movement. They open yeah. it, uh, yeah. uh, open and close, or, pardon me, or the, the, uh, 
um, limbs go uh, so, uh, go down or something. But that's that is not purpose. Purpose yeah. in the sense that it doesn't have to be guided. It does. You don't right. have. You don't need prediction and so on and so forth. Now you also talk about a fixed action patterns that are part of brains that are that are, that are uh, embedded within brains as right. as, as uh, so now imagine the problem and the problem is okay you find yourself uh, in uh, um, in control of a body so you, you have a uh, Pinocchio you hold it <laughs> on now okay now how do you do such that the movements are organized mm -hmm. and in the case of, of, of a puppet you have a well-known structure with with a, a cross-like and, and, and a structure on top, and strings that go down such that when you make simple movement, things move, right? Mm -hmm. So you need an organization that copies something like that, mm -hmm. that allows multiple muscular events to occur in such a fashion that a movvement with purpose is generated. And in a coordinated way, if it's so complicated that you don't have to think about every Precisely. fine movement. So as in the case of the puppet, if you have a well-organized system underneath, you yeah. can make beautiful movements. Now the movements will always be the same. They're fixed action. Right, right. So you know, see, uh, sort of, <laughs> and, and uh, it doesn't do it any other way. It has a particular way, of, yeah. and it has a particular way of masticating. As yeah. a, and we do the same. You know, we, so we have then evolved a beautiful set of motion patterns that makes us and allows us to do things as we're doing now. That is, we're, we're gesticulating, we're moving our jaw and so on. And we're not thinking about it. And we're not thinking about it. We can actually uh, think about the, the things we're saying. So, Which so, is hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hard enough. So, you know, so, so fixed action patterns are, are the basic next structure in movement. You need an organized, a set of organized events that are not only fixed action, but can be slightly modified. So in essence, what we're saying is that what we think is thinking, this, this grand activity, is just a glorified way of, of dealing with the needs and the requirements of movement. Well, I almost agree with you. I don't think it's glorified. It is it. <laughs> I mean, there is no, it is impossible to glorify. This is it. Oh. This is glory. This is <laughs> it. No, the, the, the issue is that, of course, we believe that for things to be um, great or be important, they have to be complicated. And we forget that the beauty of simplicity is mm. that um, it must come out of complexity. So it is the complexity out of simplicity, or the other way around in this case, the complexity that allows simplicity to be basically superposition. That is what the nervous system is ultimately about.